Welcome to the Roman Empire's most impressive building, the Colosseum. Originally known as the Flavian Amphitheatre, this is the building which many people think of when they hear about Rome and the Roman Empire. The Colosseum of today has fallen into a ruinous state, but it is still an imposing and beautiful sight. One can only imagine how great it was during its prime. The Colosseum was built by Emperor Verpassian, the founder of the Flavian dynasty. This is the reason why the building was originally called the Flavian Amphitheatre. The construction started in 72 AD and stood completed eight years later. The huge structure was constructed on top of a park built by the previous emperor, Nero. The park included a massive statue of Emperor Nero, which was allowed to remain next to the theatre. The statue was known as the Colossus Statue, and is what the theatre's current name, Colosseum, derives from. The name was further changed towards Colosseum during the Middle Ages. In Italian, an amphitheatre is still known as Il Colosseo. Throughout the years, the Colosseum has been damaged several times. Within its first 500 years, several earthquakes occurred, which led to both external and internal damage to the structure. Lightning also hit Colosseum one time, resulting in a fire which destroyed wooden parts of the amphitheatre's interior. Severe damage was dealt to the Colosseum in the 14th century, when a major earthquake caused parts of the outer wall to collapse. The result of this can still be seen today, as the whole southern part of the outer wall is gone. During the Middle Ages, ancient Roman buildings and monuments weren't respected in the same way they are today. For this reason, much of the tumbled stone was reused to build palaces, churches, hospitals and other buildings elsewhere in Rome. This has made any large rebuilding projects impossible. Another sign of the medieval spoilation can also be seen on the Colosseum. The bronze claps which held the stonework together have been hacked out of the walls, leaving numerous marks which still scar the building today. During its history, the Colosseum has not only been used for games and events, after the last gladiator and hunting events, it has been used as a church, as a cemetery, and even as a fortress at one point. During the 16th and 17th century, church officials sought a productive role for the old Colosseum. Pope Sixtus V even suggested that the building should be turned into a wool factory, but his proposal fell through. This thought of making the building productive was later abandoned. Instead, several popes had various stabilization and restoration projects initiated. What they didn't know at the time is that this decision was about to make the Colosseum extremely productive in the future. Without their restoration projects, the Colosseum of today would not have been the same. Throughout the 19th and the 20th century, the facade has been reinforced and the interior repaired. There has also been a major restoration project more recently, finishing in the year 2000. This project involved cleaning the building in order to deal and combat the effects of air pollution. The size of the Colosseum is imposing. Its elliptical structure reaches 189 meters long, 156 meters wide, and stands almost 50 meters tall. The number of the people it could accommodate varies, but modern estimates puts the figure around 50,000. The architecture was carefully planned in order to fit all these people in. Its architects adopted solutions very similar to those used in modern stadiums to deal with the same problem. 
The Colosseum had a total of eight entrances at ground level. Each one was numbered, just like each exit and each staircase. In order for spectators to find their seats, they were given tickets in the form of numbered pottery shards, which directed them to the appropriate section and row. The sections were based upon class and rank in the society, with the higher classes getting the seats which provided the best view. The Colosseum was not only groundbreaking when it comes to sheer size, it was also one of the most innovative and complex buildings of its time. The arena in particular had some very innovative solutions. It consisted of a wooden floor covered by sand, which concealed an elaborate underground structure known as the Hypogeum. The Hypogeum, literally meaning underground, consisted of a two-level subterranean network of tunnels and cages. Today, the underground is totally exposed, so you can really get a good look at it if you visit the Colosseum interior. The underground was where gladiators and animals were held before the contest began. Several tunnels connected nearby stables and gladiator schools to the Hypogeum, which allowed them to enter the structure undetected. By raising and lowering several hidden shafts and platforms, both gladiators and wild animals could be summoned instantly into the arena. And while we're at it, one can't talk about the Colosseum without talking about gladiators. These classic warriors got their name from the Roman short sword Gladius, which was used by the Roman legionnaires. A gladiator was normally a prisoner of war or a slave who had been given the decision to either stay a slave or fight in this arena. For the ones who got the chance to choose, the decision was most likely hard but easy. Slavery meant a slow, often painful death. On the other hand, successful gladiators could become very famous and even earn some money if they survived enough battles. They also won their freedom by gaining the wooden sword. The gladiator battles were by far the most appreciated of all shows. Before the battles began, the gladiators always paid homage to the emperor's stage with the famous words, Ave Caesar, those who are about to die salute you. The gladiator battles were often duels between two combatants matched up against each other depending on what type of equipment they carried. If one gladiator had been defeated in a duel but not killed, he would ask for mercy by raising his arm. The emperor then decided his fate by either giving him thumbs up or thumbs down, while the crowds did their best to affect the decision. Other shows that frequently took place in the arena were battles between wild animals and between man and animals. The animals were mainly imported from Africa and the Middle East, and included creatures such as tigers, lions, bears and panthers. The games were usually held for a whole day, and even several days in a row. To mark the inauguration of the Colosseum in the year 80 AD, Vespasian's successor Titus held games 100 days in a row. In the process, thousands of animals and gladiators were killed. The theatre quickly became the most important political tool of an emperor. Emperors used the Colosseum to entertain the public with games. It was here that the emperor met and controlled the people of Rome. The arena continued to be used for contests well into the 6th century, with the gladiatorial fights in the early 5th century. Today, the Colosseum has become one of Rome's most popular tourist attractions, receiving millions of visitors each year. Hardly surprising as the Colosseum is not only one of Italy's most famous buildings, 
but one of the most famous buildings in the whole world.